Hey all, gonna be building a eight inch caster today. Uh, this is something that uh, I think could make a real difference for people. Uh, we have, uh, normally with a caster, we have the bearings and the caster rim and the rubber um, all being sold as one uh, solid piece, essentially sold as a, as a unit. Uh, but what, the way I'm looking at this is here we have the opportunity to replace the bearings on their own, which is normally possible, um, but also separating the rim from the tire. And therefore the tire, which is the part that's wearing, uh, can be replaced separately from the rim. Also, uh, it gives you the slight advantage of being able to, you know, if you're really into it, you can always color code things. You can print a, this color of rim and that color of tire and match them together. And basically your, your limit is what filament you can find. So here we are, we've got the original uh, bearing there as a model. Um, this first cylinder is going to become our rim that we will, we will cut everything else away from. Twenty five point four millimeters there you see um, that is one inch that is exactly one inch. So it's a copy paste there to give myself two of the two of these cylinders the same and then move them up uh, so that the bottom and the top edge of these two uh, cylinders are going to be the top and the bottom of that larger cylinder that I created previously. Now I'm creating a middle cylinder um, to join the two of those together. Uh, that cylinder is going to, uh, or these three cylinders together rather, are going to uh, create the void for the two bearings as well as free space for the bolt that secures the caster to allow it to rotate without rubbing on the rim plastic in any, in any way. Now that fusion and that cylinder, I do a cut. And now we've got a void in the middle of this caster. Now I created a copy of the bearing and I'm going to move that copy up so that it lines up at the top. Now you can see already we've got two bearings and the main caster body. Even if it doesn't look much like a caster yet, you kind of get the idea here. Now Taurus, this is a, a, a wonderful shape, uh, saves us a lot of trouble. Um, you can think of that as being the tire. Um, you can see it's very small right now. We're gonna make that a lot bigger. So now I've made the outside diameter much larger, but the radius, second radius is how wide around the tire is, right? So we're doing a little bit of adjustments. I've overshot here, so we're gonna bring that from 24 down to 12. And then we're going to move it up to make it centered on the rim. There we go. Now you can kind of see with every step that we do on this, it, uh, it makes it look more and more like a caster. We're, we're always moving toward that target that we're aiming for. Now, if at any point, of course, uh, you want to follow along closer, um, certainly feel free to pause the video, you know, if you want to write down dimensions or anything like that, if you're trying to follow along and recreate this yourself. Um, I am, of course, going to be uh, posting these files up on, uh, on Thingiverse so that anyone can download them and print this cast for themselves. Um, down the road, I'm going to also create other caster sizes. I want to try to aim to have uh, a whole selection of them uh, available on Thingiverse. Um, okay, uh, catching up with what's going on here. So we had the outside shape. Now I'm trying to create the inside voids that you would normally have in a caster. Um, the way we're going to create the spokes is by eliminating the material around spokes. So I'm making this first wedge shape. I've got to do a little bit of rearranging of my workspace here. There we go. But uh, 
yeah, so I'm creating this one wedge shape, and then we're going to use next a tool uh, for called an array. And you can see here I just did that. This is currently an orthogonal. Uh, we're going to switch it to polar, so you can see now it's centering around the bearing. And then we're going to change the number polar from 5 to 4, because we only want 4 voids uh, on this caster. Now you can see that material is going to get removed from the rim and will leave us with a resulting shape that gives us four spokes. Voila! It's starting to look a lot more like a caster. But, having said that, the spokes are far too narrow. Uh, I don't have any confidence that those would actually survive uh, for very long if they were put on a chair and subjected to, to uh, blunt forces like uh, you know hitting curb cuts so I need to go back in and change that you can see now I've got a wider spoke so I went in and I adjusted the size of my original um, uh, wedge shape to be narrower and then because it's in an array the rest of those wedge shapes automatically adjust to match this the shape of the original one now I've gone in and chamfered the edges on the top and now I'm looking at a bottom view here. I'm selecting only the edges that I want to chamfer. I'm going to hit the chamfer button and I'm going to do five. Now I did try different numbers here but five is the maximum you can do before the chamfers start to overcut each other and then the the drawing fails. It doesn't uh, it doesn't know how to do the math and you end up with a faulty part. So five was the maximum chamfer I could do there. Now I'm going back in here and I'm grabbing a rim. No, there it is, torus. Grabbing the original shape that I cut away from the rim in order to make a relief for the tire. And now this new torus is going to become part of the actual tire. Uh, I'm, do, I'm going for kind of a, a square cut tread pattern on this one. It kind of reminds me of, uh, like I've got this, uh, this collapsible cart uh, that we have that's you know for throwing your groceries in and stuff uh, kind of reminds me of the of the the casters that are on this unit it's going to be a square tread pattern but I need that round relief in the center to allow it to to join up with the rim and and be centered on the rim Okay, so now I've got this outer square shape. I'm going to make the rim disappear for a minute. I need to join these two together, but we're going to run into a problem here. You can see instead of them joining, we got some weird shape that shouldn't exist. Um, this is a problem you run into with FreeCAD occasionally, where two lines, or not lines, but edges intersect. Sometimes FreeCAD loses its head a little. So I'm going to change 75 to 76 to make uh, the two edges not intersect anymore and now oh look at that fusion works beautifully and we've got a complete tire shape it's just uh one of the downsides of open source free software but hey these guys are doing it for free and you gotta love them for it so thank you guys uh they'll get this sorted later it is one of the challenges that you'll run into with open source free software um, there's always so many bugs to to fix that it can it can take a while for things like this to get ironed out But now we do have a solid shape. I've gone back and chamfered the edges in order to uh, make it print a little nicer and you know not waste material and Now I'm gonna go in here and uh, add a slight radius to the edge uh, as well just to, to clean it up it just Having radiuses and fillets on things, it just makes things look so much nicer than if you were to leave something square cut. Now I've gone in and I've changed the, the material of the rim, uh, sorry, of the tire in its properties, just to give it that black look. Uh, just helps to to visualize it and decide 
does this in fact look good or not? It doesn't, uh, doesn't affect the output file at all at the end, the STL. Uh, all, all the STL cares about is the actual shape. Now what I'm doing is I'm actually trying to create the tread pattern that's going to go on, on the outside of the tire so that it's not just a flat, flat rounded shape, but that it actually has treads. Now, important note for casters, um, casters don't actually need tread. Uh, it's a, a common thing to replace casters on chairs when the tread has worn away. Um, and I have definitely heard plenty of clients say that they want them changed because they no longer have any traction. Uh, but that is actually a bit of a fallacy. You don't actually need treads uh, on a caster because the caster is not doing anything to, to propel you forward. It has no traction. Uh, it is a following tire, not a drive tire. So the, the real purpose of a tread pattern is two, two, twofold. Uh, we've got both the aesthetics uh, of it. It'll look a lot nicer with treads often. Uh, and then it also is used simply as a wear indicator. So we know that this tire is, or caster in this case, is no longer uh, the original diameter that it used to be, which can throw off some of the geometries in the chair, such as caster angle. And we'll get to that later in in a different uh, video series that I plan on doing uh, for manual chairs. I uh, will discuss that uh, more more completely at that time uh, because it's actually a very very important angle uh, on a manual chair. Well, power chair as well, but it's less less of an issue. Now you can see I created a single tread slot, if you will. And now I'm using the orthogonal array again, or polar array again, uh, to create a hundred copies of that shape. And now I'm going to use the cut tool in part workbench to cut those, uh, cut the array away from the tire and we'll look at that. We've got a beautiful tread pattern. Just labeling things helps uh, on more complex projects. So we got a rim, tire tread, and we've got bearings. Uh, one would think that this is all we, all we need, um, but part of the key uh, of doing this is going to be making it easy to replace just the tire. So uh, I'm gonna show you uh, up next here, uh, I'm gonna be showing you how I turn this rim into two pieces because I want this to be a split rim so that we can put the, the one side of the rim down, put the tire on, put the other side of the rim on, and then join the two of the two sides of the rim together. Um, that will give us a, uh, a very easy way to replace the tire rather than having to like try to stretch the tire around the rim shape, uh, which is actually darn near impossible to do. So here I'm creating just a cylinder and I'm making it larger than half of the unit in both uh, height and width. And then I created a copy of that cylinder and moved it up and made it so they intersect at the same spot, uh, which is dead center on the caster shape. Now I'm relabeling these. We're gonna call this bottom cutaway and top cutaway. I use the word cutaway uh, a lot uh, in my designs because it just reminds me that this is this is something that I'm going to use to make a cut out of something else. And I will often do that with fusions as well uh, because it you can have multiple parts together that are all one large cutaway and it makes it a lot easier to follow the uh, um, the logic later of how I created something if I need to go back and edit it later. Okay. So we've got top cutaway, bottom cutaway, and now I've made two simple copies of the rim and renamed the rim to original, the original one. Um, now, if I take the, uh, the rim copies and then the cutaway and do a cut function on it, 
I end up with this result where I've got half of the um, rim and then I do the same thing with the other two pieces and end up with the other half of the rim. Now you can see I've put a, a half a rim down, put a tire down, put a, another half of the rim down and you can see how we would sandwich these things together to make a, uh, a full caster assembly. But we do have an issue right now in that uh, we have no way to join these two sides of the rim together. Um, you could potentially uh, try to hold this all together um, while you're putting the bolt through that is going to secure it onto the chair, but it's going to be a really awful result. Uh, so what I'm doing now is I'm creating, uh, I'm going to create screw holes in each of those four spokes so that we can have the, the two sides of the rim get screwed together. And we're just going to use simple wood screws for that. So I've created a cylinder 1.4 millimeters by 30 millimeters tall. Now I've created a copy of it and I've made that one only 15 millimeters tall. And I'm going to move it up so that it is halfway uh, through the model uh, and change its diameter to three millimeters. Now look at this from a side view and you'll see we've got the skinnier one and the wider one. I'm going to create a fusion and then we're going to zoom in and you'll see I'll bring this down so that where those two cylinders intersect will be exactly on the center line of the cut. There you go. Now I need to go back and delete those cuts that I did. Cut 14 and cut 15 because I need to remake the rim original. Some of the work I've done already needs to be backed up uh, and undone so that we can we can fix it. Oh, uh, first I go through here, I'm making another polar array out of the uh, screw holes. We're gonna switch that down to four. There we go. And then we're gonna rotate that on its, on its Z axis so that it's centered on the rim. So, I'm giving myself the clue, this is my screw holes. Okay, now I'm going to delete these two, 14 and 15. Delete, delete, now I'm going to delete rim 1 and rim 2. Those are just copies of the rim original. Now I'm bringing the rim original back, I'm going to make the other two hidden, bring my screws back, and now I'm going to use the rim original first, then the screw holes, then I'm going to do a cut function. There we go. Now we've got the rim with the screw holes in it. Now I need to go back and do the top cutaway and the bottom cutaway again. But at first I want to rename this because I like things to be tidy. So I just go blah, blah, blah. And that allows me to, you can't reuse the same name twice. So now I can call this one rim, rim original again. Oh, right. So now I'm selecting the four uh, tops of the cylinders, and I'm just going to do a chamfer function on this to two millimeters. The reason for that is that gives us a recess for a flathead screw to, uh, to put, find its way into. Okay, now I need to rename chamfer three again. I got to go back and change rim original to... There we go. Don't mind me. I, I, I'm a little uh, insistent on this. We're in my original. I made a caps this time because I don't want to do this again. This is the original. Okay, so I'm going to create copies of that. Uh, I did part, create simple copy. And now I'm doing rim cutaway and rim cutaway. There we go. I see this weird stripey pattern, it's just because the original rig, uh, rim was still visible. So I made that invisible. Now we've got this one is rim bottom, so I'm going to name it that. And this one's rim top, so I'm going to name it that. And there we go, we've got, we've got it all done. So here we go with assembly. We've got the bottom of the rim, tire, top of the rim. You see how we just make a nice little sandwich, I like sandwiches put the screws in and assemble this into one completed rim. 
I did not show the, uh, the assembly of putting the, uh, the bearings in. This is because I had to do a fair amount of uh, cleanup on the bearing receiving holes. They basically, I haven't tuned my, my print settings yet uh, enough, so it uh, would have made it for a very boring part of the video. So those are just pre-installed at this point. Um, but I will tune the files and everything and put my print settings up on Thingiverse for what I would suggest. The rim in this case is made out of PLA uh, and the tire tread is made out of TPU, a 95A durometer. And there we go, we've got a completed caster. Links are in the description.